Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about soybean seed treatments. There's a lot more to soybean seed treatments than just inoculant. We'll give you some of the other categories you should consider for your farm. We'll also talk about wheat fungicides. There are several different timings and many different products you could use on our farm. We'll talk through that today. We've got a tough to control weed of the week that doesn't get enough attention. We're going to show you how to get that under control later in the show. We've got an iron talk as well, but first, here's our farm basics. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about pesticide safety. Believe me, this is the number one concern for farmers that are using pesticides. They want to use them safely. They want to choose products that they really don't have to worry so much about their own safety. They want safe things to be putting out on their fields. In our opinion, there are three key things to look at on pesticide labels. One is the LD50. You can usually find that on the MSDS, the Material Safety Data Sheet, for each product that there is out there and that basically tells you how lethal that particular product is, how strong a dose you'd have to have before it gets really bad. Uh, also, you want to take a look at what is the personal protective equipment requirement, so what do you have to wear in order to use and apply this product, and finally, what's the re-entry interval? In other words, how quickly after you spray the product can you go back in the field? So those are the three big things we're looking at on the safety side most of the time as farmers. Let me start by talking about personal protective equipment. And when you think about that, it sounds like, oh man, you've got to be in an astronaut suit uh, hidden behind some safety shield to be putting stuff on. That's not what I mean. A lot of times what you'll read on the labels is they'll say, make sure you're using rubber gloves. And on some products, maybe if there's some issue with eye safety, they'll suggest wearing goggles. Or maybe you want to wear a long sleeve shirt if skin exposure could be a problem. It's just important to look at the products and see what's going on. If they're skin sensitizers, certainly you want to protect your skin as you're doing it. But for me, no matter what I'm using, I'm going to be wearing rubber gloves and I'm going to use goggles just to be on the safe side. All right, and we talk about the re-entry interval. Basically, that's how long, how many hours or days you have to wait before the product is now safe, maybe dried on. It's not going to be toxic to you when you go back out to the field. And when we talk about toxicity, I mentioned LD50. That stands for lethal dose 50%. So in other words, as a human being, I have to be concerned about how much could I potentially ingest. Now, the, the good news is with most products that we're using on the farm, the LD50 is way higher than it is for a lot of products that we may consume as adults. So, for example, caffeine. The LD50 is 200 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, whereas atrazine is 3,000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. In other words, it would take 15 times more atrazine to kill you than caffeine. And we look at products like glyphosate, for example. Everybody wants to villainize glyphosate. Like, glyphosate has changed our world, and now everybody's got cancer because of glyphosate. Get real. That's one of the safest products that's ever been invented. It works on an enzyme found only in plants. It's not even found in human beings. And then the other side of it is the LD50 is 28 times higher than caffeine. So it would take 28 times more glyphosate to kill you than caffeine. Yet, which one are we thinking about banning, caffeine or glyphosate? And let me take this one step further. If you look at gasoline, it would only take a tiny little bit, just a few ounces of gasoline, if you drank that, to kill you. Yet, with glyphosate, it would take an unbelievable amount that you would have to drink in order to kill you. But again, what are we thinking about banning? Glyphosate or gasoline? My vote would be gasoline. That's way more toxic. It's not even on the same planet as what glyphosate is in terms of toxicity. Yet we pump it in our cars every day. We don't wear personal protective equipment when we're pumping it in our cars. I think it's crazy. 
Well, for farmers to use pesticides, they definitely want to be aware of what the safety hazards could be. We look for personal protective requirements. We definitely look for re-entry intervals, how soon we could be back in the, the area that we just sprayed. And then certainly we're looking at the LD52. Yep, this pesticide safety thing is just a huge issue. And for us as farmers, I can just tell you on our farm, we are very careful about what we're using, when we're using it. And I, I just know this, there isn't a product we use on our farm anymore in terms of a pesticide that's even half as dangerous as many of the household cleaners you probably have right below your kitchen sink and it's not even close to as dangerous as what gasoline is. So I bring all this up because we think it's incredibly important to stress this to the average consumer out there just so they realize a lot of the products we're using today are actually natural products. You look at Callisto, that's one of the most, and that whole HPPD family, that came from a tree. The most popular insecticide came from a flower. We have so many natural products now or reproductions of those natural products anymore. It's awesome. A lot of the very dangerous products we used to have 30 years ago, they've been banned, removed from our market, and thankfully that's the case. Well, removed from the United States market, and that's yep. probably another topic for another time, but some of these pesticides that are banned here are not banned in other countries around the world, so you do want to be cautious where your food's coming from. Well, when you're checking pesticide labels for safety, you might want to check on there if that pesticide is going to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what will stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. Avoid the V-shaped pattern of injury caused by chemical buildup in your booms. The Express End Cap from Hypro eliminates the dead ends that lead to herbicide buildup and provides easy access to your booms, giving a complete flush between applications. Hypro, helping you spray better. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. Tough, precise, efficient. Strip tillage with the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm. Learn more at soilwarrior.com slash agphd. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plant be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. You've already made the seed variety and seed trait choices for your farm, but now it comes down to what are you going to put on for seed treatment? Don't try to cut costs here. There's some great value in soybean seed treatments. We're going to talk about some of the different things you may consider for your farm. All right. Now, Darren says don't try to cut costs. Let's talk about cutting costs. What are you going to cut out of your soybean seed treatment package? Let's first talk about what are the categories. So to begin with, I'm going to say fungicide. That's probably one of the most important things, but there's also inoculant, kind of a no-brainer, pretty inexpensive. Beyond that, you can look at insecticide. And then finally, I'd say other biological. So I really have four different things that I could potentially put on that seed. 
Brian started the discussion with fungicides, and I would say this, fungicides are kind of hit or miss. We don't know if it's going to be a bad year for disease or not a bad year for disease. We don't know if you're going to plant seed in the ground and all of a sudden it's going to be 85 degrees, sunny, everything's perfect and the beans jump out of the ground, or if they're going to struggle with wet feet throughout the year. The big deal is to look at what's the 10 year average and over 10 years, are you going to have problems with wet feet in your soybeans and disease? Absolutely. Make sure you protect your seed with fungicide. We would suggest using multiple modes of action to try to get the best amount of coverage for various diseases that you're going to fight. Fusarium, Rhizoctonia, Pythium, uh, Phytophthora, lots of different diseases are going to impact your crop. And if you hurt your stand right out the beginning, it's a lot like livestock. Brian and I grew up with a cow-calf operation and a farrow to finish hog operation, and we saw if young animals were sick early, it was really hard for them to catch up. The same thing holds true with plants. If your plants are struggling early on with disease, they're just so much more susceptible to other problems happening during the season, and that results in less yield. All right, but if you want to cut costs, could you cut fungicide? Sure you could. Like Darren said, it's hit or miss. Sometimes you're gonna gain five or eight bushels, other times you're gonna gain zero. How you have a better shot at gaining more yield though, is try to pick the newer fungicides and get multiple fungicides, not just one. Insecticide is one component that we do see some farmers cutting out and I would caution you just a little bit. When we think about the insecticide on soybean seed treatments, it's a neonic. Now there's several different neonics out there and they're fairly similar in what they control. But in terms of bugs impacting your seed early in the ground and foliar with things like bean leaf beetles, we found this to be kind of a no-brainer thing where you don't have to get right back out and spray foliar for those early season insects above ground and certainly there's no rescue treatment for insects below ground. All right, if you are getting an insecticide on your seed, make sure you're talking to your seed dealer. You should be able to get some free resprays if you have to come with some insecticide post-emerge. So again, make sure you talk to your seed dealer. That could cut your costs later on. All right, the next thing you look at is inoculant. That's the one I'm going to say I, I wouldn't cut that. I, I, I absolutely wouldn't cut that. It only costs a couple of bucks. And what we found is you might not gain tremendous yield, but for a couple bucks, you only need to gain a quarter of a bushel. Most of the time we're gaining at least that. Sometimes we gain five. All depends on the year, depends on the soil type, everything else. The other thing I would say is even if we don't gain a whole lot of yield, a lot of times we've put more nitrogen in the soil, and even if we put three more pounds in for next year, you know, that does kind of start to dollar up. It does help cut your costs in the future. One more comment on inoculants, Brian, real quick. Uh, when you think about inoculants, if you want to get more out of them, they're live bacteria. Put them on just before the seed goes in the ground. If you treat them up a month in advance, you're going to lose some of them. So if you want to get the maximum effect out of your inoculant, put it on right before you plant the seed. Last thing I'll say, other biologicals, we're huge believers in these. Now we're using heat shield and NutriCycle. Uh, so we're getting almost 30 different biologicals right there in that combination. In the past, we've done a tremendous amount of quick roots fantastic product as well. So I'd really look hard at those biologicals. My overall summary with this thing is, talk to your seed dealer. You should be able to get a package for $15 or less, or right around that $15 mark, to get all these things, to get 30, 35 different treatments, get that all, get some respray if necessary, get free treatment if you have to replant, those types of things. Work that out with your seed dealer in advance. And the last thing is seed flowability. You want to make sure that whatever combination you're putting on isn't going to cause you problems in your planter with clumping and other things. So just make sure that what you're doing is going to work for you. Well, one of the things that always seems to work is having great weed control. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plant be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye.
Agro Liquid moves you closer to your target. Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. I think about what kind of farm I'm going to hand over to her. About how I can make it more successful, more sustainable. I talk to other farmers, with agronomists and advisors to help me make better decisions, to figure out what's working for them and how to make it work even better for my farm. Because when you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing. To look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line. Then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day. Because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Wheat fungicides. There are many different timings, a lot of different products. We're going to talk about those things today, but the first thing that I want you to think about is in terms of wheat disease tolerance, it's not as great as what we're typically going to find in corn and soybeans. Part of it is just the breeding dollars that have been stuck into corn and soybeans compared to wheat, but the other side of it is just think about the canopy that we're creating even very early in the season with wheat that traps a lot of moisture, and when that does, it makes conditions ripe for disease. With fungicides, it's important to understand how they work in the plant. They move in the xylem, which means they can only move up. They don't move down. So we've got to get great coverage when you're putting fungicides out, which typically means more water, more gallons per acre, and more pressure with slightly smaller spray droplets. So we don't want to have great big droplets, especially on small wheat. So when we get this good coverage out there, think about the new growth on wheat. I did say that fungicides move up, but they basically move up a little bit in the same leaf. They're not gonna protect new leaves that come out in a few days. So as those new leaves come out, they're unprotected. So we'll be back out again later in the season to treat again. Darren brings up a great point. So I want you to think about what's the most important leaf to protect on wheat. Well, obviously it's a flag leaf and that's why typically flag leaf applications have the most yield. Now we also see, depending on the year, Heading timing applications pay tremendously well too, but the third application timing that we really wanted to focus on today is what we would call herbicide timing. So when you're gonna go out and spray your herbicide, you're already making a trip over the field, it's early in the season, that's when a lot of times we can go with reduced rates, but there are many diseases that are gonna show up early. So that's the timing that we think is tremendously important right now because it's gonna be the first one that we're gonna hit here this spring. Let's talk about products a little bit. You might be using just straight propiconazole or tilt today. And we look at that as kind of some old technology and a chance for you to upgrade and get more yield potential out of your crop by switching to something with two modes of action. So it's nice to use a, a triazole type product like propiconazole. We'd like to see a strobal urine type product go in there as well. You could buy two modes of action in a premix or you could potentially mix your own. Now, if you want to get three modes of action out there, you could throw an SDHI into this mix as well. Nexacore, for example, is a triazole, a strobe, and an SDHI. Same thing with Trivapro. So you have two different choices there, both three modes of action. And while three modes of action sounds like it's gonna be a lot more expensive than something like a generic propiconazole, it's only a few bucks more. You can get Nexacore at the half rate for the first spraying in your wheat crop for only about five bucks. 
If you have not been doing any fungicide on your wheat in the past, we just encourage you at least try some out, try some strips on your farm, and then you gotta look real close. Keep in mind, like even investing $5, that may or may not sound like a lot of money to you, but it's not gonna take very much wheat to make that pay. Well, that little difference in yield, is that gonna show up on a yield monitor? No, it's not. So you've gotta really look close to see, hey, did this pay? Did this double my money, which is really what I'm after? Did it triple my money? Did I break even? How did I do? And when you're looking to go out to those wheat field spraying fungicide, you'll also wanna watch out for our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it, coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? The thing I like most about our Weed of the Week, Darren, is the name. It's not Lamb's Quarter, it's Lamb's Quarters. Well, it's one of the first <laughs> weeds as a kid that I could identify because it has a silvery dust uh, kind of around the top yep. and, the, and those top few leaves. And that was just obvious to me once I saw it. But getting it under control is a whole other story because if you don't kill it when it's just got a couple of leaves on it or before it emerges from the soil, it's going to take a strong rate of product because it has so many growing points. That's the whole key. It does have a lot of growing points and you need to kill each and every one of those. So what we commonly find now is guys will say, oh, my lamb's quarters is resistant to Roundup. Really? I go out there and I see a whole bunch of dead growing points, but the last couple down at the bottom didn't die and now they, they branched out. What that tells me is you sprayed either when the weather was not good or you didn't use a high enough rate. That's why we're talking about lamb's quarters control right now. Get a pre-emerge herbicide out there, get a soil residual product going so you can stop them before they emerge. Yeah, so what you should use for a pre on soybeans, use the three pre program. That's either Valor Authority plus a yellow plus metribuzin. In corn, I like broadleaf herbicides like Verdict. It does a nice job. It's got a strong rate of sharpen in there. And by the way, in wheat, sharpen would be your best option as well pre-emerge. Okay, let's talk about post-emerge. In wheat, I'd probably go husky. In corn, the HPPDs are fine. I prefer status, but the HPPDs are so cheap. And atrazine That's probably adds a little go. kick too. Absolutely, it does. And then when we get to soybeans, this is where we have the real problem. You could go back to the old Harmony, for example. That's pretty good for very little money. Otherwise, Roundup is okay. Hey, you just have to make sure you're using a strong enough rate. Same thing with Liberty. And don't forget about the Dicamba products for Extend Beans. They'll work well also. That's all time we have for this week's Weed Lambs Quarters. But Iron Talk is coming up next. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. 
Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planning? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. Tough, precise, efficient. Strip tillage with the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm. Learn more at SoilWarrior.com slash AgPhD. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend Crop System, the system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yield's what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season that's what it's all about. This is my field. Farmers across the country have put their confidence in the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. These are their experiences. This year, Extend Max has been a, a great tool for us to go out there and to kill weeds. We applied it early on a couple fields that were dirty. It really did a phenomenal job on getting the fields clean. Our Roundup Ready to extend soybeans last year performed very well. Our percentage of satisfaction has got to be real close to 100%. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the Tiger Mate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. If you're applying pre-emerge herbicides this spring and tillage is an option, I'll discuss which tools may prove most beneficial in today's Iron Talk. There are quite a few herbicides that can be used pre-emerge either after planting or in a strictly no-till environment. If you're using things like Harness, Surpass, Prowl, Valor, or the Authority family of products in this manner, just know that you'll need some timely rainfall to get them into the soil and ultimately into the target plants. If tillage is an option with your farming practices, it can be used to reduce the amount of moisture needed to activate the herbicide and potentially even to increase the effectiveness of the product. The key is to get it stirred into the soil evenly at the proper depth for that herbicide to work. We get questions about using a disc as a herbicide incorporation tool every spring. And there are corn stalks that chop up and mix into the soil, as well as herbicides and fertilizers. The problem with the disc is there just isn't enough stirring and mixing to get the herbicide evenly distributed in the soil and you see streaking. The same would be true with vertical tillage coulter units. Our preferred tool has been the field cultivator. If you have the sweep set so there are no gaps that aren't tilled, it provides an excellent mixing of soil. The other two challenges that are very common are number one, getting too deep with the tillage, and number two, getting deep enough to cover the wheel tracks without getting too deep for the herbicide. We've always figured that the majority of your herbicide is moved to about half the depth of your tillage. So if you till it four inches deep, your herbicide moves two inches down, for example. Since most pre-emerge herbicides need to stay in the top inch or so of soil, tillage must stay very shallow. Here's our solution. Drive fast. If you're running eight miles per hour, chances are you won't be able to go too deep. Also, you can drop the shanks lower right where your wheel tracks are so you can cover the wheel tracks without getting too deep across the whole length of the field cultivator. Follow these tips in conventional or reduced till operations to make your pre-emerge herbicides work their best. That's all for this week's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but if you're looking for more agronomic information this week, we'd encourage you to check out the Ag PhD radio show 
It's on at 2 p.m. Central each weekday on Sirius XM Channel 147. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Read of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Yeah.